history of the University of Iowa. We have welcomed a new president to lead our institution 21 other times in our history. And today, we are installing our third woman as president. For 16, <laughs> for 16 of the last 27 years, the University of Iowa has been led by a woman that's a record to be proud of. We've gone from our first president in the mid-19th century, Amos Dean, who led the university part-time from his home in New York, to our 21st century presidents, who work more than full-time and lead a large institution of higher education that has international and even galactic reach. You're probably familiar with several of our past presidents from their names on buildings. Hancher, Schaefer, McLean, Jessup, McBride, and Boyd. Others you may know from your specific experience here or the ways in which they have grown our university. All of our presidents have led the university through difficult times. War, social unrest, campus violence, natural disasters, economic crises, and pandemics. But even more importantly, all of our presidents advance the institution in critical ways. Expanding research opportunities, educational offerings, public service commitments, resources, and the campus itself. They have even used times of adversity to move us forward. For example, this fall, 14 years after the flood of 2008, we will celebrate the opening of our wonderful new Stanley Museum of Art. The Stanley will join the incredible Hancher Auditorium and Voxman Music Building, as well as programs like the Iowa Flood Center as positive outcomes of that disaster. Each president has taken the excellence of the university to heart and moved our institution forward, making sure that the people of Iowa remain proud of its first public university. Over the years, thousands of talented faculty, staff, and students have created the innovations and achieved the progress that has made Iowa a great university. We have a wonderful, creative community here, a place where discovery and connection are valued. But it's taken excellent leadership in Iowa's presidents to take the institution from an idea in legislature's minds exactly 175 years ago today to the sophisticated, complex university that we now are. President Emeritus said, Sandy Boyd famously says that people, not structures, make a great university. And the University of Iowa has had the immense fortune to benefit from talented people in the president's chair. We as a university community are excited as Barb Wilson joins us and, in a, and joins these ranks of the University of Iowa's distinguished leaders. Our speakers today will share with you why we have such confidence in Barb's leadership and her passion for developing a creative, diverse community here at Iowa. Again, I'm honored and delighted to welcome you to this momentous day as we install Barbara Wilson as the 22nd president of the University of Iowa. We will now hear from leaders of our shared governance. It is my pleasure to first introduce you to Reagan Smock, president of the Undergraduate Student Council. Reagan is from Coggin, Iowa. She plans to graduate in May with a Bachelor of Science in Sociology and a Spanish minor. Please welcome Reagan Smock. <laughs> A 
undergraduate students are the beating heart of our campus, and I have had the privilege to serve as a voice for them this year. Though it's not an easy job representing over 20,000 people with very different thoughts and opinions, through this experience, I have learned that you don't necessarily need a PhD to know what's right for students and for our campus. I love being the student body president at the University of Iowa because I have seen firsthand our leadership's commitment to shared governance and to listening to student voices. Working with President Wilson this year has filled me with hope that this tradition and commitment to valuing undergraduate perspectives will only grow stronger as she continues to lead our campus. I have a short anecdote that came to mind when I was writing my speech uh, that she most definitely will not remember because it's, it's just her nature, but um, Moal and I had a meeting with President Wilson early in our administration to talk about our goals for the year, what we wanted to accomplish, and something had come to mind for me that had been an undergraduate student government's platform for like five years. It was kind of far reaching, but I wanted to bring it up. And someone had given me some advice like three years ago when I started my job that if other Big Ten schools have something, they're way more likely to implement it at Iowa. So <laughs> I did a little research and I was really having a hard time finding that policy anywhere else. And I like hesitantly told her, you know, I don't know if it's gonna work because other Big Ten schools don't have it. And, she said something absolutely mind-blowing to me. She said, well, maybe we could be the first. I am so grateful for President Leadership's, or President Wilson's hope, determination, and genuine care for the people that make up the Hawkeye community. We are genuinely grateful that you are here. Not just like something you say, this job is hard. Being a leader is hard. But I am so glad you keep showing up and with that beloved positive attitude. We're so lucky you're here, and I am so excited to see the ways that the University of Iowa flourishes under your leadership. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce the graduate and professional student government president, Mwala Banafti. Mwala is a PhD candidate in civil and environmental engineering from North Plainfield, New Jersey. Help me welcome Mwala Banafti. <laughs> Greetings, esteemed peers, faculty, staff, postdocs, visitors, and fellow Hawkeyes. I am Walla Kashia Banafti, a fourth year doctoral candidate studying civil and environmental engineering in the 2021 2022 University of Iowa graduate and professional student government president. It is my honor to tell you a little bit about why, in my humble opinion, graduate and professional students are the most important part of university life. Humble brag. <laughs> to put it simply, we fulfill every role there is on the campus. We attend class, we teach class, we work at reception desks, we supervise residence halls, we see patients, we heal people, we run research labs, publish papers, and earn grants, we govern, we vote, and we litigate. When the rest of the campus stops, we don't. Graduate and professional students are the batteries in the back of the University of Iowa that have kept it going under all circumstances, including an international pandemic, a controversial national election, a global climate crisis, and a second civil rights movement. All of which happened in the three and a half years I've been here alone, not to talk about all the challenges before me and everything in the years to come after. Because we do all the jobs I described above, our participation in shared governance as an independent student body is critical. 10,000 plus graduate and professional students have made a commitment to furthering their careers through service and education at the University of Iowa. We are excited to be joined by our new president, Barbara Wilson. I wholeheartedly believe President Wilson cares about the well-being of her students. And President Wilson has also expressed that the needs of graduate and professional students are a priority to her. Graduate and professional student government is excited to continue to partner with the Office of the President in advancing our shared missions of equity, inclusion, and appreciation. The past 175 years have been great, but I have confidence the next 175 will be even better because of the collaboration we are fostering here today. I am pleased to introduce my partner in shared governance leadership, Kevin Zielman, President of Staff Council and the Assistant Athletics Director for Compliance as our next speaker. Now please help me welcome Kevin.
Thank you for the kind introduction, Walla. Appreciate it. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Kevin Zellman, and I'm speaking today as the president of the University of Iowa Staff Council. I'm honored to be a part of President Barbara Wilson's installation ceremony. Over the last six to seven months, President Wilson has continued the tradition of engagement with UI shared governance, specifically our UI staff council. Our staff council executive committee, which is made up of staff from the academic side of campus, healthcare side of campus, and various auxiliary units, has had monthly meetings with President Wilson. As a council, we've taken these meetings as collaborative efforts that inform President Wilson of the staff experience at the UI, as well as for, for President Wilson to assist us in communicating back to our constituencies. I speak on behalf of the University of Iowa Staff Council today in asserting that we believe President Wilson gets it when it comes to the need of having dedicated, educated, and engaged university staff to operate this institution of higher education. Staff at the University of Iowa are critical to the complex functioning of this university, and we must continue to treat staff as an equal third at the University of Iowa. In order for our students and faculty to experience success, there must be dedicated staff present and engaged to support these individual experiences as well as the overall institutional mission. For many of us that have chosen the University of Iowa as a career destination, we are dedicated in continuing to advance the university as a workplace of choice for those in the state of Iowa and nationally. As a staff council, we believe in creating and continuing partnerships with university leadership while respectfully speaking up and speaking out against existing norms that may hinder the personal and professional development of our wonderful UI staff. As a University of Iowa alumni, a former graduate teaching assistant, a current adjunct instructor, and current full-time staff member, I have had the opportunity to view this university through a variety of lenses. Ultimately, what the University of Iowa needs in top leadership positions is people that reflect the value of Iowans, people that care about other people, people that truly believe in helping their neighbor, people that will sit and listen to those that need listened to. The UI Staff Council sees those qualities in President Barbara Wilson, and we express our appreciation for our continued partnership with Barb. Thank you again for the opportunity to be a part of this installation ceremony. I would now like to introduce Teresa Marshall. Teresa is the president of Faculty Senate and a pro professor in the Department of Preventative and Community Dentistry in the College of Dentistry. Please help me welcome Teresa Marshall. Thank you, Kevin. The University of Iowa was founded in 1847 as a public institution to teach, conduct research, and serve the public. 175 years later, our mission continues to address teaching, research, and service. University of Iowa faculty educate our students. We shape Iowa's future humanists, scientists, artists, lawyers, engineers, educators, business professionals, and healthcare workforce. We, the faculty, both create and translate knowledge. Knowledge ranging from vaccine development to water quality improvement to space plasma physics science to improve our state and the world in which we live. We also serve our communities. We share our knowledge within our disciplines, Iowa, and the world. We solve problems. We provide health care. We create artistic, musical, and theatrical experiences, not only locally, but in communities across the state. University of Iowa faculty participate in shared governance at the collegiate and university levels. Through shared governance, faculty voices inform decision-making 
to promote policies that enable faculty to pursue their teaching, scholarship, and service endeavors. These policies ensure faculty rights of academic freedom and free speech, both necessary to pursue their scholarship with integrity and share their findings without fear. As faculty senate president and on behalf of the University of Iowa Faculty Council and Faculty Senate, I am honored to welcome Barbara Wilson as the 22nd president of the University of Iowa. President Wilson, we appreciate your commitment to faculty and look forward to engaging with you to ensure the success of our great institution, the University of Iowa. Thank you.
Thank you, Professor William Menefield and students from the School of Music for that amazing performance. There was some discussion of dancing, but uh, we, we opted uh, not to. Uh, sorry, that's not in here. I should, anyway, it's, but we, there was some discussion of dancing. It is now, now my pleasure to introduce you to the president of the Board of Regents, State of Iowa, Dr. Michael Richards. President Richards earned both his undergraduate and MD degrees at the University of Iowa. He was in practice in Des Moines for more than 20 years and also served as the first chief medical officer at Iowa Health System, now Unity Point Health. Until his retirement in 2017, he served as managing partner of Quattro Company, Composites, a company specializing in manufacturing carbon composite equipment for the aerospace and medical industries. President Richards began his service on the Board of Regents in 2016, and he has been the board's president since 2017. Please join me in welcoming President Mike Richards. Thank you, Dr. Abel. Uh, before I begin my formal remarks, I would like to uh, acknowledge something the, this past week one of our members of the Board of Regents who participated in the selection of President Wilson died. His name was Milt Dokovich. He was really the, one of the most respected members of our board. And I, I believe I speak for him today too. He's a wonderful man. Uh, the Board of Regents is honored and excited to join you today at, the, at this significant moment in the history of the University of Iowa. We are pleased we are able to install President Barbara Wilson on such a key date, the 175th anniversary of the founding of the University of Iowa, the state's first public university. From its founding in 1847, the University of Iowa has fulfilled and exceeded the promise the original legislators so long ago envisioned. As we look to the future, the Board of Regents is confident and optimistic about the University of Iowa's continuing role in Iowa's cultural and economic development. That confidence lies significantly in the Barbara Wilson presidency. The hiring of a university president is the most important task of the Board of Regents. In its search for a new university president, the Regents and the Iowa campus saw in Barbara Wilson a leader with unusual depth of experience in public higher education leadership. A vision both creative and practical, a scholarly and teaching record that was both long and innovative, and a personality that fit well with this institution. Barbara Wilson has brought a fresh vision to the University of Iowa, and she knows how to move the campus forward and innovate in productive ways. The people of Iowa are fortunate that Barbara Wilson chose to accept the challenge and the opportunity of leading this university. The University of Iowa is in excellent hands as it furthers its extraordinary service to the people of Iowa, the nation, and the world, and the galaxy. <laughs> uh, uh, in, the in the areas of education, research, the arts, healthcare, and so many other areas. President Wilson, on behalf of the Board of Regents, we look forward to continuing our partnership with you for the good of the university and the prosperity of the state of Iowa. It is now my pleasure to introduce a would-be drummer to you, Adam Gregg, the Lieutenant Governor of the state of Iowa and a native of Hayward in Iowa. Lieutenant Governor Gregg serves as the chair of the Governor's Focus Committee on Criminal Justice Reform and co-chair of the Governor's Empower Rural Iowa Initiative. He previously served as the state public defender and as a legislative liaison and 
policy advisor to Governor Terry Branstead. Prior to joining the governor's office, he practiced at the Brown Winnick Law Firm in Des Moines. Please welcome Lieutenant Governor Adam Gregg. <laughs> Well, thank you. It's an honor to be here. It's an honor to serve you in the role of Lieutenant Governor. Let me start out by saying that Governor Kim Reynolds sends her regards. She's not able to be here today, but I want you to know how honored and proud I am to represent her, represent our team, and represent our state here with you today. Thank you, Mike, Rickard, Mike Richards, for that very nice introduction. So I made the mistake of telling Mike beforehand that I've started playing the drums and the praise band at church. And then, of course, we have that great group come out here and put me to shame and remind me of how much work I really have to do. But Mike, thank you for your leadership of the Board of Regents. I also want to acknowledge and thank the members of the Board of Regents who are here today. Thank you for your service to our state, and thank you for this particular selection. As we gather today to celebrate the installation of President Wilson in the long line of University of Iowa presidents, as you know, we also celebrate the 175th anniversary of the University of Iowa's founding. So I thought I would try to impress you by using the fancy Latin name for that, but apparently there are a lot of ways and a lot of strong feelings on how to express 175th in Latin. You could go with demi semi septentennial, quarto septentennial, tertuasque centennial, septiquinta quinquis centennial, or dodrans bicentennial. I'm gonna stick with 175th anniversary, that's all right. No matter how you say it, though, for the past 175 years, the University of Iowa has served to benefit the people of Iowa and the communities of this great state. Whether it's our students who get to challenge their minds, explore their acad academic curiosities, and engage with leading faculty at a world-class public institution, or the thousands of alumni growing their professional career in our state with the help from a University of Iowa degree, Studying at Iowa gives folks the chance to strengthen their skills and deepen their understanding. As the co-chair of the Governor's Empower Rural Iowa Initiative, I'd be remiss not to mention the positive impact that the University of Iowa has had on our rural communities. Iowa graduates provide essential professional services in rural towns like medical care, pharmacy, dentistry, legal services, accounting, and more. And this is on top of the research and engagement that the university has with rural communities, helping them analyze and tackle long-standing challenges in a new way. But of course, the University of Iowa doesn't merely stand to benefit Iowa. Whether it's breakthroughs in scientific research or masterpiece works of art, the students and faculty on this campus are at the forefront of innovation. In that way, the benefits of the University of Iowa transcend our state's borders to impact the nation and the world as well. And I guess I'll say the universe to keep up with uh, some of the other references. And now, President Wilson will lead the University of Iowa into its next 175 years. I look forward to seeing how her vision will shape the university. And I know that under her leadership, Iowa will remain a leading institution that continues to offer unprecedented opportunities for students and alumni in the name of service to our state. The people of Iowa look forward to continued and renewed excellence in education, research, economic development, and healthcare at the University of Iowa under President Wilson. As I close, I'm reminded of a quote from another very highly accomplished Wilson, and that's Meredith Wilson. A native of Mason City, Iowa, Meredith Wilson is famous, of course, for writing The Music Man, which, by the way, is undergoing a revival on Broadway starring Hugh Jackman, and I'm sure it's outstanding. Uh, I should also mention uh, that I think we can all agree that Meredith Wilson, Wilson's true masterpiece is, of course, the University of Iowa fight song. But Meredith Wilson once said that most playwrights go wrong on the fifth word. When you start a play and you type act one, scene one, your writing is every bit as good as Arthur Miller or Eugene O'Neill or anyone. It's that fifth word where the amateurs start to go wrong. President Wilson, as we celebrate your installation today, the next 175 years at Iowa will remain unwritten. You might say we're still in Act One, Scene One. But I'm confident that under your visionary and expert leadership, the story of the University of Iowa will remain one of excellence, inspiration, and accomplishment. Just like the countless award-winning novels, scripts, and screenplays to come out of the writer's workshop, I'm certain you'll get it right, even from that fifth word on. 
So on behalf of Governor Reynolds and the state of Iowa, congratulations to you and congratulations to this outstanding university. Go Hawks. The University of Iowa was established by the General Assembly many years ago, and we must always remember that we are here to serve Iowa first and foremost. Once you're in, involved with the university, it's a part of your life as long as you live, and you, the more active you are, the more satisfaction you will have, and the greater the university will become. When I close my eyes and think about the university, I see people, not buildings. So pe that's why I say people, not structures make great institutions. It's about time we came to realize how important others are, and others give meaning to our lives. That would be the most important educational objective of a university. Our job is to support the faculty, and also in that process, the student body. Faculty are essential to the quality of the institution, and we need to give them support, and basically, they are the program of the university, and administration is secondary. She doesn't need advice. She's had a great deal of experience. She's out meeting people and understanding about the ethos of Iowa and the University of Iowa. And she's been in, in, involved with Big Ten University. So she's coming here. We're very fortunate, very fortunate to have her here. And she will lead us well. I've had the good fortune of meeting her and she has the enthusiasm and the obviously is a vigorous person and we're going to prosper under her leadership. Give them hell, Barbara. I'm now honored to introduce to you President Barbara Wilson. Dr. Barbara J. Wilson earned her bachelor's degree in journalism and master's and PhD degrees in communication arts from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. She came to Iowa having served as an executive vice president and vice president for academic affairs of the University of Illinois system. Prior to that, she served as head of the Department of Communication, vice provost for academic affairs, Executive Vice Provost for Faculty and Academic Affairs, Harry E. Prabel, Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, and Interim Chancellor of the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, where she was a member of the communication faculty for 21 years. President Wilson fits right in here at Iowa. As she herself said when she was hired, I was born and raised in the Big Ten, and I'm a Midwesterner at heart. Although her education and most of her career has been in the Big Ten, President Wilson was also a professor of communication at the University of California, Santa Barbara, and the University of Louisville. Her research focuses on the social and psychological effects of the media, particularly on youth. She is the co-author or co-editor of four books and over 80 research articles, book chapters, and technical reports. In 2008, she was elected as fellow of the International Communication Association. Please join me in welcoming the 22nd president of the University of Iowa, Barbara J. Wilson. Wow. Thank you, everyone. I'm glad I saw that video of Sandy Boyd yesterday so that I could shed a tear then and not today. Thank you, Ted, and thank you, all of you, for joining us today as we celebrate this remarkable university. 
Thank you as well to all of our speakers. I really appreciate your personal remarks and how much time you've devoted to this event. Thank you. And I want to express special gratitude to Gulruk Mehaboob, College of Public Health doctoral student who painted that beautiful watercolor of Old Capitol that graces the cover of today's program. I am so very honored to serve as the 22nd president of the University of Iowa, especially at the 175th anniversary. Only 59 days after the state of Iowa itself was created, the Iowa legislature founded the University of Iowa with a mission to educate teachers for the state schools as well as professionals for the state's economic and cultural development. According to the Iowa Code, the universities, and I quote, object shall be the, to provide the best and most efficient means of imparting to men and women upon equal terms a liberal education and thorough knowledge of the different branches of literature and the arts and sciences with their varied applications. Pretty profound. When the university first opened its doors in 1855, it enrolled 124 students, and there were nine departments, and the library consisted of 50 books. How far we've come in 175 years. Today, at over 31,000 students, our enrollment has increased by more than 25,000%. Our library, with more than 5 million volumes today, has increased by more than 100,000 times in size. Most importantly, we are now a world-class, multifaceted institution of higher learning with leading-edge research programs renowned creative activity like you saw on the stage today, top-ranked healthcare, and stellar service to the state and the nation that could not have been imagined 175 years ago. Today, on the university's 175th birthday, I embrace my role as president with great pride and tremendous humility. As soon as I arrived here on campus, I knew that the University of Iowa was a very special place. But what I've discovered in the last seven months is that we have a secret sauce here that's comprised of three distinct qualities. Comprehensive excellence, creativity, and community. Let's start with comprehensive excellence. It's unusual and worth celebrating. Many of our peer institutions are weighted heavily towards certain disciplines, but we are fortunate here at Iowa to have a balanced portfolio of strengths. Indeed, we have nationally recognized programs that range from nursing to neuroscience to nonfiction writing. Our faculty and staff and students recognize how easily they can pursue multiple talents and interests. Where can a student easily pursue a double major in math and theater arts in the same college at Iowa? Where can faculty members from diverse fields such as medicine, biostatistics, law, anthropology, psychiatry, epidemiology, dentistry, and engineering all collaborate through a genetics cluster here at Iowa? And where can professors of medicine publish in a College of Medicine creative writing anthology here at Iowa? The University of Iowa is also known for fostering creativity. Creativity, I would argue, is the engine of innovation across all of our disciplines. And our faculty and student researchers and creators are doing amazing things here. They're working to restore sight for those with congenital blindness. They're working to treat cancer using the body's own immune system. 
and 19 creative writing students have just signed a film option for a revolutionary collaborative rewrite of F. Scott Fitzgerald's classic, The Great Gatsby, here at Iowa. We also have a long history of creatively celebrating. Did you know that an Iowa engineering professor developed the flash flood early warning system that's used today by the National Weather S S Service? Did you know that two U of, I, U of Iowa faculty members combined calcium and magnesium to br produce a product today that I'm guessing many of us use to relieve heartburn and indige indigestion? Rolaids was discovered here. Did you know that George Gallup, the father of modern day public opinion polling, was born and raised in Iowa? And he was the editor of the Daily Iowan. He also earned a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and a doctoral degree here at Iowa. And did you know that the UI Center for the Book created a special acid free preservative paper? that the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and the Constitution rest upon in their display at the National Archives in Washington, D.C. Rounding out our strengths, comprehensive excellence, incredible creativity that's the engine of much of what we do, we are girded by a powerful sense of community. On campus, within Iowa City, and with friends, alumni, and supporters throughout the country. Another way of saying this is that we are big and comprehensive, but we're small enough to enjoy a warm community feel, both on campus and throughout this wonderful city and region. There aren't many places with this vibrant community dynamic, and ours in Iowa City works incredibly well. And I noticed that our mayor is here today, so thank you, Bruce, for showing up. As president, I vow to nourish and protect these distinctive strengths of this very special place. Now, what about our future? Today, we are setting priorities that will be crucial for the next 175 years of this astounding university. Now, I promise I won't be president during all of those years, but I'm going to set the stage for the future. And these will be pri priorities that will honor our past as well. When the UI was established, students were at the forefront, and that remains true for me today. Student success must always be among our highest priorities. That includes offering superb educational programs that will enhance the lives of our students, and it means making sure our students are able to stay here and graduate. Historically, some of the University of Iowa's greatest innovations have focused on the education of students. Unprecedented research opportunities for undergraduate students began here in the late 19th century. Prominent Iowa natural history faculty, such as Charles Nutting and Homer Dill, brought undergraduates along on research field expeditions to places such as the Bahamas, New Zealand, and the Fiji Islands. The workshop method that's used in the instruction of all types of writing, of course, originated from the early days of the Iowa's Writers Workshop. And Iowa was an early adopter of the then revolutionary laboratory method in the sciences and of the case method, law, case method in law. But in today's world, we know that student success is built on more than excellent programs and innovative teaching methods. To keep students on track today, we need to cultivate a sense of belonging here at the university and to make sure that students graduate in a timely way. I am committed to expanding financial aid and scholarship resources, as well as programs such as peer mentoring, academic support, and career coaching. We've already seen such efforts work in initiatives like the First Gen Hawks program. This program supports Iowa undergraduates who are first in family to go to college, 
and it boasts a 92% first year retention rate, which is higher than that for the university overall. Of course, we can't have successful students and programs without stellar faculty, and you heard that from St Sandy Boyd today. One of the things that struck me most when I first arrived at Iowa is how often I heard students express admiration for the excellence of our faculty and their personalized efforts to make students feel part of the Hawkeye family. Many of the greatest successes in our university's history are associated with the names of exceptional faculty members. Paul Engel developed the Writers' Workshop into a global powerhouse that we enjoy today. James Van Allen pushed the University of Iowa to groundbreaking discoveries beyond the Earth's atmosphere, out into the solar system and beyond. Myrtle Kitchell Adelot, the first dean of our College of Nursing, raised the national research pro profile of the college at the same time that she expanded service to Iowans throughout continuing education programs across the state. E.F. Lindquist and his colleagues literally invented the field of educational testing here at Iowa. And Nancy Andreessen has pioneered today's incredible world of neuroimaging and brought us new understandings of schizophrenia as well as creativity. We must continue to recruit and keep faculty like this, faculty who create new knowledge and pursue discoveries that change the very understanding of our world. So recruiting and retaining transformational faculty is another one of my top priorities. We've really recently announced two new programs intended to do just that. The Transformational Faculty Hiring Program will recruit tenured faculty with national and international reputations who can make a revolutionary impact here. We're looking for talented faculty in key strategic areas of scholarship and with interdisciplinary strength, in areas that are also high in student demand. These individuals will become creativity magnets, fostering rich collaborations across campus. We've seen how effective such efforts can be in our own Master of Ceremonies today, Ted Abel, who directs the Iowa Neuroscience Institute. Sorry, Ted, I know I use you a lot as an example, but you're a great one. The Neuroscience Institute explores the causes of and cures for many diseases that affect the brain. And it was founded in 2016 with a $45 million gift from the Roy J. Carver Tr Charitable Trust. Thanks to Ted and the Institute, we've hired 20 new faculty members specializing in neuroscience, and we've retained three others. We've generated more than $85 million a year in research funding related to neuroscience, and we're bringing that money right here to Iowa. And we've created a new undergraduate major in neuroscience with more than 280 students, 70% of whom are women. In short, we need to attract more Ted Abels. We've also created the Iowa Mid-Career Faculty Scholar Award, which will help us to retain outstanding faculty who are already here. Mid-career is a time when rising star faculty members are most likely to be poached by other institutions. So this award will provide three generous years of support to recognize recently tenured faculty who excel at research, teaching, and service. Each awardee will also have an opportunity to work with mentors on a career plan for continued growth opportunities that include leadership training, grant writing, and support for further interdisciplinary collaborations. Mental health and well-being is a third priority I am particularly passionate about. Nationally, 30% of college students report that they arrive on campus with anxiety or other mental health issues, 30%. When the pandemic hit, that increased to 80%. 
Mental health and well-being is a necessity not just for our students, but for our entire community, including faculty and staff. Although these issues may seem fairly contemporary for higher education, I'm pleased to say that the University of Iowa has a notable history of paying attention to the well-being of the whole person. In the early 20th century, Elizabeth Halsey was a pioneering director of women's physical education at Iowa. She understood the importance of physical fitness to well-being, as well as the necessity of comparable physical education opportunities for both men and women. Also, over 100 years ago, the University of Iowa created the Child Welfare Research Sta Station, which later became known as the Institute of Child Behavior and Development. This was one of the first institutions in the world devoted to the study of what was then called the normal child, or what we might call today the healthy child. In those early days at Iowa, studies were conducted across a broad range of issues from physical growth to psychological and intellectual development. In more recent times, UI Human Resources has developed an award-winning Live Well program, established now more than 15 years ago. It is now a fully integrated campus approach to well-being for members of our entire university community. Despite these accomplishments, we still have much to do in improving the mental health and well-being for our campus community. In the past year, we've hired eight additional on-campus mental health professionals for students. We've also now implemented a 24-7 phone, text, chat line for students that promises immediate support and crisis counseling day or night. The Division of Student Life has recently hired three new student care coordinators to assist students with mental health concerns as well as basic needs related to food, clothing, and housing. And several of our colleges have actually embedded mental health professionals into the fabric of their academic enterprises. Professionals who have offices and spaces in very visible locations for students. We want to make that a reality in every one of our colleges. And finally, a university is healthiest when it reflects the society we serve. So diversity, equity, and inclusion must remain a top priority. Treating people equitably, having a university community that reflects the diversity of our society, and making sure everyone feels a sense of belonging are all crucial parts of fulfilling our mission. The University of Iowa has had a long, proud history of diversity, equity, and inclusion, stretching back to its earliest days. We were the first public university in the nation to accept men and women on an equal basis. No wonder we've had three women presidents. We were the first Big Ten institution to promote an African-American to an administrative vice president's position, Dr. Philip Hubbard, who in 1966 became our vice president of student services. We have the oldest state university recognized and continually funded LGBT student organization in the United States, founded in 1970. Christine Grant, the first and only woman's athletic director at Iowa, who sadly passed away a few months ago, was nationally known as a pioneer in gender equity in athletics. And we were the first public university in the country to offer insurance benefits to employees' domestic partners in 1993, including same-sex partners. What a legacy. These are tremendous accomplishments, but the work of DEI is never finished. We must always strive to be greater in terms of equity and inclusion, and we must be constantly vigilant in maintaining a diverse community. Today on our campus, we benefit from such programs as BUILD, which stands for Building University of Iowa Leadership for Diversity, B-U-I-L-D. 
It's a certificate program for faculty, staff, and graduate students to gain knowledge and skills in creating a welcoming environment for everyone. Today, over 3,800 campus community members have participated in BUILD since 2015. We're gonna get those numbers even higher. Iowa EDGE is another highly effective initiative, a four-day orientation program for 150 underrepresented first-year students that helps to make sure they are ready for the college experience and they feel welcomed to the Hawkeye family. I also want to ensure that our definition of diversity is broad and inclusive. We have to strive to have a campus that offers opportunity to everyone in society. For those of various races, ethnicities, and national origins, for those with disabilities, for those who have served in the military, for women, men, non-binary genders, and people who don't identify as a specific gender. For individuals who are LBGTQ+, for those who are the first in family to go to college, for those from rural parts of Iowa, as well as those from urban areas such as Chicago and San Francisco and Boston, and for people ac from across the socioeconomic spectrum. By definition, a university includes multiple perspectives and fosters dialogue and understanding among differences. We can achieve that only by reflecting the diversity among the people who make up our communities. So, the future of the University of Iowa is bright, and my goal is to make sure the future shines as brightly as possible. I want to showcase what a public university can do and be in a state like Iowa. I also pledge to elevate Iowa's excellence at the national level. We must be a magnet for talent, for the best faculty and the best staff and the best students. We must be known as a place where comprehensive excellence and creativity are encouraged, rewarded, and celebrated, and where people can achieve their best, regardless of background. We must be the place that the public turns to for excellence in healthcare and for robust ways to make the world a better place through learning, discovery, creative expression, economic development, and more. It will take all of our disciplines working together to solve society societal problems that we face today, such as a global pandemic, threats to democracy, and war. The University of Iowa has accomplished so much throughout the 175 years of its history, and together with a spirit of creative collaboration and a vibrant, caring community, we will accomplish even more. My job is to work with our students, our faculty, our staff, our alumni, and with government leaders to help us achieve all that our founders hoped for and more, to position the university for the greatest levels of excellence for the next 175 years. Thank you again for joining us today and for celebrating the University of Iowa's proud past and promising future. Thank you. Thank you, President Wilson, for those heartening and optimistic words. Barb Wilson brings to us an impressive record of experience and achievement. But as many of us already know, she also brings to us warmth and enthusiasm and caring. Her ethic of caring will carry us forward in ways that we can only imagine. We're looking forward to it, Barb. From day one, President Wilson has been seeking ways to be transformative here. She's engaged the community and listened to us. She shares our sense of purpose, both academically and socially. She understands that we're here to support the well-being of everyone in our university community, 
from students to faculty to staff, and most importantly, to create a sense of belonging for each of us. She understands that our larger purpose is to advance the knowledge, well-being, and prosperity of our society. Barb Wilson is someone who will advocate for us and help us build a community that connects to Iowa, the world, and I have to add, the galaxy. <laughs> she has already made a difference, and I know our community will flourish under her leadership. We thank President Wilson for her willingness to lead the University of Iowa and for sharing her talent and vision with us. And thanks to all of you for being part of this significant moment in the history of the University of Iowa. Please also join us this weekend for more of our 175th anniversary celebrations. Tomorrow, we invite you to two special exhibits at the main library, now with more than five books, and Old Capitol Museum. And on Sunday afternoon, please join us once again here in Hancher Auditorium for the annual presidential lecture. Three distinguished University of Iowa faculty members, Craig Kletzing from Physics and Astronomy, Christopher Merrill of the International Writing Program, and Patricia Winokur of the Carver College of Medicine will share insights into their signature programs in the context of the history and the future of the University of Iowa. But now, following the singing of the alma mater and the recessional, please join us for a reception for President Wilson in the Stanley Cafe. Thank you all. Thanks. Come all alums of Iowa and lend your voices true. Sing praises to our alma mater as good Hawkeyes do. Let's keep within our hearts a far to magnify her fame. Bring credit to these noble halls where glory and honor reign. The day is near when comrades here will be farewell and part. But each hawk I carries on thy spirit in their heart. Oh, Iowa, Iowa, we drink a toast to you. We pledge our everlasting love for dear old Iowa, you. Alma mater. Thank you. 